so much. Um, so hi there. Uh, my name is uh, Enrique Rodriguez. So I work at Repo. We're basically a. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, so I work at Repo. We're basically a online platform to um, collect and display ratings, reviews, and uh, customer generated content. It's it needs. We're hiring Repo developers. If there's anyone in the room. And I'm basically overall a huge GNU Linux uh, nerd, and you know that because I use GNU Linux. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've got my email there if you want to contact me. And yes, email, one of those guys. And I like making presentations with bullet points, so deal with it. <laughs> right, so um, I'll be talking about Ansible. Uh, you guys are probably familiar with it. Um, Ansible faults and how some weird tricks, well, not that weird nowadays, but very, very interesting stuff that you can do with Ansible Vault. Maybe a lot of, uh, a lot of us that use Ansible are not using these at all. Yeah, and I especially like the last topic. So Ansible is basically an orchestration tool. You can look at it basically as a uh, uh, super overloaded shell screen, basically. Uh, but it's not shell script, it's written in Python. Um, everything is described in, in YAML, so it's easy to write, easy to read. It's Python based, but it's extensible in any language. Uh, so you can do things like launch a machine in AWS and then go inside and install Emacs and then create a symlink to Emacs if you try to run Vim, stuff like that. Um, and it's way, way better than either Puppet or Chef, right? Everyone agrees? Yeah. Well, actually, you just use it side by side. It's, it's not going to work, but it's actually better than Puppet or Chef. So, um, Ansible Vault is the way Ansible has to deal with um, Basically, credentials, uh, encrypted information, passwords that you want to keep in your uh, Git repo, for example, that you don't want anyone to know. Uh, the way it works is you have a, uh, a chef password. Uh, well, I'm gonna get in there, I'm gonna help myself. So you can encrypt almost everything with it. You can encrypt uh, files, you can encrypt the tasks themselves that you run to make life uh, very, very complicated for your colleagues. You can do all of that. And there's a command called Ansible Vault that deals with all of that. So Ansible in the background, when you run an Ansible task, it will call Ansible Vault to equip things for you on the fly transparently, and you don't need to do anything except maybe just inputting your, uh, your password. The problem is it equips whole files. So no grab <laughs> Now, Ansible Vault, um, you can create encrypted files or you can encrypt the file if it's not already encrypted. You can decrypt that file, you can view that file. You can also, there's a command, the edit command, so you can um, basically Ansible will decrypt the file, present to you on your favorite <laughs> editor, you edit what you want, and once you save the file and exit, Ansible will decrypt it and you'll never know if your files didn't change. Um, you can, uh, when you run something with Ansible and Ansible run, you can pass that parameter so that Ansible will ask you where is your password, uh, or uh, simply, please give me your password, and you, you, you'll have to write it every time, which is a pain. But you can also set, because if we're working with many people, you don't want to change, uh, you don't want to add that thing wherever you go, like the well, password file is in there. It, because it might be different for, uh, for your developers, for your uh, ops engineers. So you can simply say it's, it's, it's in that uh, um, environment variable, just set it up, please. So just read the docs, it loads its life in there. So how do we deal with Ansible Vault password? So 
it's a shared password, as I mentioned before, and the password file actually cannot be encrypted because Ansible needs to be able to read it, which is a shame. The thing is, the password file can be an executable file. You don't have to leave your password uh, unencrypted for anyone to see. So you just write a script. Write a script to store in a GPG file and then you can get it on the fly. Uh, use your hearing. So every operating system has its uh, kind of dependent common If you are, if you use, um, I think it supports Windows kind of. I've been told it supports Mac. I'm not sure. Yeah. This is actually not a Mac. It runs Linux. Um, or you can use GNOME, KDE, Wallet, whatever. You, and for example, what we do is we we use different scripts depending on what developers want, uh, on what developers like, and we start those scripts in the version control system, and basically just set the password to say use that file and don't bother me. Uh, this is the script that I use. It's like four words. So there really is no, no excuse for us not to have our information secure as much as, we, as it can be. Now the other thing, this is something that I found out uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, which is my main pet peeve with Ansible is you, you're not allowed to store um, Value, uh, uh, values, encrypted values. You have to encrypt the whole file. And I love, I just love grab. And it pains me so much whenever I try to find something, you do grab search, oh, somebody forgot to set this uh, environment variable, oh no, it's actually encrypted. And, and it's such a pain. And you can do that with, Pep, with Puppet and Chef, so me saying that Ansible is better, oh, and a bit of a thorn right here. Um, so the good news is that Ansible can kind of do it, they just haven't announced it. Um, so a friend of mine pinged me um, a couple of weeks ago and said, hey, look at this weird commit in Ansible that says, oh, we can decrypt values now. So, well, nice, you're going to make a presentation about it. <coughs> so the, the current tools are a bit useless, so with Ansible Vault, I mean, if the only thing you have uh, encrypted is your uh, values, it means the file itself is not encrypted. So if you're trying to do an Ansible Vault uh, view or edit, it just says this file is not encrypted. And that's okay. It's, it's, it's a bit boring, but it's okay. Now what you can actually do is use a bit of that. Ansible Vault Encrypt Decrypt, it can read stuff from uh, standard input, and then just do a bit of copy-paste and you'll win. So this is an example of um, a variable file in Ansible that has uh, no encrypted values, right? And now this is an example of how we can obtain an encrypted value. Basically, we do that. Echo dash n bar, and then we pass it to Ansible Vault Encrypt, and we'll get a hash. Um, you can also encrypt like the whole, uh, get information from a whole file if you want to, or like the last command is if you want to get a, an encrypted password, for example, a random password, you'll, you'll use that one. Now if you pick up that information, like the first one that, that hash that we have there, you can just shove it in your, uh, in your file. So that thing is YAML. There's that special parameter called Vault Encrypted. So this is for Ansible 2.2. For Ansible 2.3, things are a little bit different. Uh, not, not that much different, but just a tiny bit. And you just shove that there. One thing I really, really must point out is the that N, that uh, dash N in the echo bar, it's really important because that means you're not storing uh, backslash N. <coughs> the blind feed. I've made that mistake a couple of times. Um, so for Ansible 2.3, the difference is just, instead of being vault encrypted, it's just vault. Right? So, very simple to do, very easy to do. If you love grep, you can still use grep. 
the documentation for it's all to three now includes this information before it wasn't there. Um, and I, I still believe that, although it's a pain you don't have Ansible edit, I still believe uh, everything is still evolving and support will come soon. So in the future, hopefully, you'll be able to do that. Um, I thought about uh, writing some tools for that, but I said, yeah, they're, they're going to support it upstream, so I really don't care. It's not that much stuff that I need to, to, to crypt. Um, and yeah, that's it. Ansible is awesome. <laughs> uh, hi, thank you for, uh, for the presentation. I, I got a question. Um, so if you increase using a password locally, when you are going to deploy, how do you make sure you are synchronizing the passwords to use the script? I'm going to go a little bit back. back, back. Well, one thing that I have there is that uh, no, Mac, it's agentless, no master server required. Okay. So everything you do, you run it from your own local computer. So okay. you don't need to have that machine, that, that password anywhere else. So if I wanted to make it part of the previous deployment, uh, where... In, in that case, uh, you probably live in your uh, <coughs> in, in machine or the agent that does that, you will have that password. Actually, Ansible uses SSH key and file and file items, which means that everything wants to be executed is being executed securely on the client. So there's no problem with that at all. No, I think what he was saying is, for example, let's say your your pipeline lives in, say, Jenkins, for example. You know, Jenkins is the one that needs to trigger all of that, then yeah. the password must be somewhere. And it must be synchronized, so the encryption key used to encrypt the message synchronized somewhere. So the thing is, if, if you can use a script, right, yeah. to fetch that information, so it's up to you. You can set up a pipeline for JKs. <laughs> yeah, inception, inception I know, over pipeline again. is cool, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. any other questions? Why don't you use one key per a key value File and put it in vault, and then just confirm those values in other places of the thing. Because in that way, you actually are able to grab whatever you want. So you mean using the. You have one encrypt, totally encrypted file yeah. called vault, let's say. Then you have another one called parse. So, for example, what you're saying is in this example here. Just underscore bar and put, sorry, vault underscore bar and make a the uh, normal bar, ansible bar value encrypted. Well, because it's boring, and this way I don't need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, maybe it's boring, but it helps you encrypt stuff, because you do a yes, no. Not anymore. <laughs> well, yes. OK, I'll give that one over here. <laughs> I just want to know one thing, because today I uh, accidentally uh, pushed unencrypted uh, secrets into a feature branch. Rotate, rotate, rotate. I already based very fast, right? But, like, is there a GitHub hook that you're aware of to stop that? Rotate your key, just like now. Yeah, just don't be stupid. Rotate your key and don't be so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> That's a message for the Okay, Henrika, thank you.